um, reason for works. That's welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks for the uh, Shao Gang and his uh, committee the invitation. Um, I will talk about this uh, case, which of the model. Uh, I remember I talked about this about a few years, uh, several years ago, and uh, I will um, tell you more about because we have some make some uh, recent uh, progress in this uh, mo uh, particular model. So um, um, I think we I don't need to uh, give too much introduction about the dark matter. We believe that the dark matter and uh, original oscillation implies there must be new physics. We understand the model. And uh, to address the new physics, we usually have uh, extended Higgs factors. Uh, so there are many, many uh, possibilities. Uh, for example, two x model is very popular to address the new physics. And uh, one particular version, the so-called inert Higgs of the model, uh, by imposing some discrete uh, zero symmetry that can lead to uh, existence of dark matter candidate in the two x model. And uh, also, so even the simpler uh, extension, just uh, adding a scalar sync in the standard model, uh, you can have dark matter too by imposing Z2. Uh, uh, this model has been studied by many people, you know, including uh, Xiao Gang here. Uh, also, the triplet, uh, there are many versions of triplet, uh, in particular the GM triplet, the uh, uh, Georgia and Archa triplet, have been studied by Zheng Wei and, and his uh, collaborators uh, in, in Taiwan. So uh, basically, we need to uh, have an uh, extend Higgs factor and possibly with some uh, uh, global discrete symmetry imposed by hand to address the uh, dark matter physics in particular and even in neutrino physics. Um, before I get into the detail of the model, uh, just just uh, let me give you some highlight of the model. Um, we will have extension of the uh, Higgs group including the uh, new factors of SU2H cos P1X. Um, this uh, extension basically uh, was uh, motivated by uh, a seminar given by Ping Wong Ko uh, a few years ago at NCTS at the other meeting. Uh, in his model, he had uh, assigned the two hexa red with a different uh, U1 charge, U1H charge here. And I was, uh, remember I was asking him a question uh, whether we can extend it to us on the BDK symmetry and uh, we are not, uh, this, this is the motivation, main motivation of this uh, model, the gauge to the model, so G is then for the gauge, rather than general in, uh, in other uh, literature. We also have external fermion sector, I will tell you more because uh, later, and uh, extend Higgs sector, a little bit extend Higgs sector, uh, and basically we need uh, the triplet of the new factor of SV2H, and also a doublet of, the, of, the, of this uh, so-called dark as you say. Um, the crucial thing in this uh, model, I think I, I like the most, is that because the, we don't need to impose any z 2 symmetry in the theory, and we will emerge naturally, uh, accidentally, I will use the word, so that all the standard model particles are even, so that we can have a naturally uh, dark matter candidate in the model. Uh, in particular, the, the second doublet of, of this model can be a dark matter candidate. Uh, since uh, and Gordon is here, so I have to do these two factors, just uh, I have to say a little bit about the left right symmetric model. Uh, so compare with that model, uh, for it's a baby, W prime. Uh, this, we have also a W prime in this uh, factor, and also some of the extra Z prime and Z double prime. Uh, the W prime in, in, the, in this model actually is not charged, it's not electric charge. They have back charge, not electric charge. So actually it can be a primary candidate in a, in a model. So it's a, there's one difference. Another feature is that in this model, we don't have any favorable termination current in the Yukawa sectors. Uh, for the standard model sector, it will be Yukawa couplings. And also, for the extended uh, neutral gauge coupling on this extra factor, we also have a favorite, we don't have a favorable termination current at, at the three levels. So I will briefly mention about this model because I guess that most, of them are, more, most of you are not familiar with this model. And then I will talk about the technology on uh, three different areas. Uh, because we have an extended Higgs sector and extended gauge sector, I will talk about the so-called SGSC, uh, the scale and gauge sector constrained by the existing uh, data and also theoretical constraint. And then I will talk about uh, double Higgs production in the model, and finally I will talk about the parameter uh, phenomenology in this model. So this has been uh, 
the top, this uh, content of the talk based on uh, several paper. The origin model was uh, uh, was uh, uh, studied by Wei Xin. It's also here, I guess, uh, and Spring Chai. Uh, and then we have uh, my team at uh, uh, Academic City have had uh, follow up uh, several kids, made, made several work on the numerology. So the model is uh, actually is not very uh, difficult. So H1, H2 are two duplets. We just put the two duplets into uh, a reproducible representation of the SU2H, the new SU2H. And, uh, and then we also have a chip pack uh, for symmetry breaking vision. And uh, the other duplet of SU2, these are all SU2. H uh, chip pad and SU2 uh, H uh, top pad. Uh, we need this top pad because of to give the uh, uh, masses to the new Fermi that I mentioned, uh, we mentioned uh, uh, in a moment. So, as you know, as you probably noticed that if you put the two H top into this uh, top pad of the new SU2, the usual U power coupling cannot work. So, the simple thing to write down U power coupling is to extend, uh, you put the right hand of the standard model of U right by introducing new heavy guys, I will call UHR into a duplet of the new SU2H. And similarly for the down type right hand pop, you introduce heavy guys uh, in, uh, in, in the model to, uh, as an SU2 duplet, the new SU2 duplet, then you can write down the cover couplings in for the setup model and the new piece for the, uh, for the disk invariance. And actually the two, two you cover will be the same, related by the same uh, uh, couplings. So it's, it's constrained by this uh, uh, by the standard model in cover. But at this stage, actually, the heavy guy, you do not get a mass. You need this uh, 5-2, uh, the new duplet, right? So you do the same thing uh, for the left hand sectors. And then uh, because of anomaly cancellation, you also need the heavy guys, uh, the left hand heavy guys for this uh, 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 U-pop and down pop and also for the left hand sectors. So it's very simple. Basically, you. Uh, you, 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 one, you, you do this step, and everything will follow more or less uh, by force. So let's uh, take a quick look at the scalar potential. Let me remind you the general case of the model is given by this uh, uh, expression. We have uh, seven quantum uh, um, couplings and two mass parameters, mu1, mu2, lambda1, two, lambda7, and also a mixed term, mu1, two. This is the CB variating term in the general case of the model. If you impose a, a, a discrete symmetry uh, with uh, h1 go to h1 and h2 go to minus h2, and this will reduce to a simple form, it will eliminate two terms of uh, the lambda, lambda 6, lambda 7 are gone, and this will be if five still have five uh, lambdas and two uh, independent mass, mass term. And in this model, uh, let me remind you that the h2, zero, the uh, neutral component of the second dot rack, uh, usually written at the uh, uh, scalar and pseudo scalar piece as plus IP. And this, the masses of these two scalar and pseudo scalar particle are, are, are not the same. They are given by this formula. So either the scalar or pseudo scalar can be a dark matter in this model. In, in this model, in our model, uh, the potential is given by this uh, uh, several pieces. So the first piece is come from this, just a two star bracket. And you can see that there's all term here, have only one new term and uh, two lambda, lambda h and lambda h prime. Um, so you will reduce a, a very simple form. You, you just have to look at the top rate, the two top rate. But unfortunately, we have other uh, scalar, the fine h, for example, the new top rate for the SU2H, and the triplet terms, and also the mixed term. So of course, the, by itself, the V5 and the V delta are very simple, just like the, uh, or you can write down a simple uh, term, ECD. And they are only, uh, at this stage, they only have the seven parameters. It's the same as the inert of the model. The trouble is this term, the V mix, we have uh, in two to uh, six more terms in the mixed term. Uh, the, the two terms, they are mass, uh, the dimensional one, of M term, M parameters, uh, between the duplet and the triplet couplings. And also some uh, cost term, cost the quantic coupling, there are four of them. So then six new, new parameters in this uh, new potential piece, the mixing piece. But uh, all the parameters are real, so there's no CP variation in the scalar potential. And I didn't mention about the U1X. Actually, we need the U1X here, because if you don't impose the U1X in the model, uh, then there will be extra term uh, like this. It will be entered in the potential, and then we have, it's just more complicated. So we introduce another U1X, a local one, not a global one. 
to forbid extra term like this in the in the in, in, in the model, like simplify a little bit. So the interesting thing in this model, I think, is that following. So the scale of potential that I have uh, show you is actually contain all the numerical terms. So we have this discrete symmetry, and all the uh, I show here. The x2 is the uh, is r, and also the the g is the um, in this component, upper component of the second subject, and also off diagonal of the trip that they are all, all the other are of even. So at this stage you already see that there are three possibilities for the dark matter, either the duct or the or the gold stone uh, uh, component or the trip track off diagonal piece. They can be dark matter model uh, candidate in the model. So uh, you can actually uh, look at the whole random including the Yukawa and these sectors and they actually had this accidental zero symmetry and you can assign this uh, parity to all the prior uh, particles in the model, all the standard model particles, and also the two H1, X2 and X3 come from the uh, HR neutral, uh, neutral hex because of the duck pack and the trip pack. And also the neutral picture base goes on, they are all even. All the others are odd, including the heavy fermions, the W prime, and the Schwarz hex, and the D and the, e, uh, the delta neutral D will be the scale dark matter. I will talk more about uh, in a minute, and also the delta Pluto is another uh, dark hex, you can say, I will mention in a moment. So there's a hidden hit, uh, parity, I call it hex parity, in a model, uh, it's accidental. I don't do anything, I don't put it by hand. It's uh, come out automatically, it's an emerge uh, parity in some sense. So let me uh, say a little bit about the spectrum. So we do the same uh, ex uh, uh, exercise, you expand the hex field around the vacuum, there's a vacuum here for each one and no where for H2, and then a V5 for the duplet, and V delta for the triplet. And then you go on to do the exercise, and then you find out all the physical field and close down field. So we have eight generators for the, for the whole group, 2, 2, 1, 1, but we have only six close on. So they are left with two unbroken generators. One of them we can, uh, we can check is actually the, the good old photon, the electric charge, G3 plus Y. And the other one is a massless uh, generator called it, uh, correspond to this unbroken generator, uh, Q, Q, QB, in this uh, combination. So this one is uh, still massless at this level. So this is a dark photon or dark Z. Uh, they could be the first in dark matter, uh, studied by um, many people in recent years. And when it's massless, you can give a more small mass to it by adding uh, suckable mass, for example. I don't have time to talk about the, you can add the two suckable mass, MY and MX to the 2 e factor in this model. Uh, but it's actually you can add even such a way that to keep a one photon is massless, the other one is uh, uh, is uh, massive. So the mass matrix for the first one is uh, the hex, the is a neutral hex that coming from this three. They are mixed together in the, into H1, H2, H3, and the first one, H1, the largest one will be the standard model hex. So this one will be 128. Uh, uh, combination of the three components uh, in the model. They have a component for a standard model duplet and the extra duct hex duplet and the extra duct component from the uh, triplet. So they are highly constrained. This actually H1 because it's very standard model like. So that means that H11 is very really close to one. The other two are uh, uh, the components are all very symmetric are very small. Actually, we can, uh, the web has to be constrained, the V5 has to be constrained bigger than. Channel TV, TV, and also by the electric uh, uh, data, and also the run through data from LC. I will show you one part later uh, on this uh, uh, constraint for this uh, uh, the scale factors. The very important thing is that this mass metric for the for the complex scalar in the model, the GH uh, and the H20 complex, and the delta P of diagonal the triplet, they are given by this metric, and they have a series of same parameters <coughs> to keep this mass metric called neutral uh, CP even mass metric. The important thing, even though it's very complicated, this metric has a zero determinant. And uh, so this zero eigenvalue actually uh, <coughs> corresponds to the boson boson, the physical boson are given here, and they will be absorbed by the longitudinal component of the W prime in this model. And this can be a vector dark vector candidate. Uh, but we are not going to look at this possibility in, in this, uh, this talk, uh, I <coughs> the other two eigenvalues in, in, uh, on zero eigenvalue of this matrix 
One of them will be the largest one with the D that I mentioned earlier, and the other heavy one will be the delta pseudo is the combination of these uh, this three uh, uh, physical state, and this is a physical state, mark iron state. The D will be combination of the equipment them here, and the lighter one, and will be the dark matter candidate. You notice know that this is a complex field, and there's no CP, uh, no definite CP in this uh, for these uh, particles. So the rest of the spectrum is uh, easy, there's a boson boson, and the finally is the charge phase uh, mass. And this is the different from the inert phase like given by here. So all the three vacuum extraction value enter in this uh, charge phase in, in this model, but in the uh, in, uh, in the case of there's only two parameters, the lambda three and the mu two. So um, so I basically uh, um, explain a little bit about the, the model so I can go to terminology now. Um, so let's, because we have an extended scale center, it's so important to understand whether we have any constraint, we want to constrain the model parameters in, the, in this model. If first I look at the scale sector first. In these sectors, I will impose, of course, the, the vacuum stability, the VS, point. So the scale potential should be bound from below. And also, thirdly, all the two by two, two to two, Scattering amplitude in the scatter sectors, and this is a three level scattering amplitude in the scatter sector. We call it the probability parity. We have to impose it to parity, so called PU. And finally, we have to consider Higgs physics in LC. In particular, the diphoton signal strength of the, of the 128 GeV Higgs. So let me want to show you the, one of the, the parts that we have. <coughs> so this is the constraint that we uh, uh, scan on the parameter of the lambda all the lambdas here, and uh, on the, this block, the off diagonal, upper, upper right angular block, is coming from a constraint by looking at the vacuum stability and also for the probability entirety, we have some constraint in this case. So in here, it's a too small to see the scale, but uh, but the, I just want you to compare with this pink block with the purple one, which we impose besides the but the basic utility and the vacuum stability constraint, we also impose the Higgs physics constraint. And you can see some of them are actually the size of the uh, figures have been shrink. And in particular, for this uh, lambda x prime and lambda x delta and lambda prime x prime, the, you can compare these two. And for example, they actually shrink between and after, before and after you impose the Higgs physics. That means the Higgs physics impose more constraint on this, uh, uh, this three, these four parameters including the uh, lambda phi delta. And, uh, and but for the others, they thought, uh, for example, the standard model, lambda x kind of standard like, uh, is actually is no longer a number here in this actually has a range, many big, many big range possibility. They're not constrained by, by not so constrained uh, much by the data from this uh, analysis. And uh, similarly, for this uh, lambda x prime, is uh, the most loosely constrained. There's a big range uh, allowed by the lambda x prime. So for the gauge factors, uh, we, will in, we have a look at all the z-pole observables and all the lab proof constraints on the contact interactions on the, because we have a z-prime and z-double-prime. And also we look at Jerry data from the z decay to, uh, at the LC. And uh, more importantly, is a constraint from the high mass resonance from the z-prime LC run through data. And and just show you one plot because of the time I don't have to, I, I don't need, I, I cannot show you more. So in general, the, the Z boson is, uh, there's three of them, Z1, Z2, and Z3, and in the, in the heavy MH scenario, MH is a stuttable mass. Uh, they are, we can have the Z1 is, a, is the close to the Z pole, and the other two are heavier than the Z pole, uh, uh, 91 GeV. So this is the scan parameters that we have project on the, the, the new coupling GH and the second mass of the uh, Z2, the, the, the mass of the Z2 in here. You can see that the, there's a limit we can imposed on the GH and the uh, MZ space, the second mass, the mass parameters for second Z2 space, and the upper limit and lower limit depends on the composition of the Z2. Uh, so the red here is the W prime light, and uh, blue is the mix between these, uh, all these three components, and the green is, uh, is X light, is a U1 light. So, <coughs> uh, so you can see that for the X, uh, W light and the mix light, there are a, a big hole here is uh, in constraint. Uh, that means the upper limit is uh, uh, reduced by the, w, uh, by the, the, the high mass resonance Z prime data from the uh, uh, 
uh, it's a very important data concern in here. And similarly, for the for the other parameter, V5, the web, or the new web, versus the, the Z2 max, is also there's a big chunk uh, uh, cut off by the web2 data. And the lower limit was uh, constrained by the, uh, for the V5 is actually constrained by the precision data from the web2. Uh, so, uh, the next topic is double hex. And we know that in the standard model, uh, um, the single hex production is about 45 uh, picobars. For double hex, it's about three automatically lower than that. So to observe that is very challenging. But in, the, in this model, actually, there are many places to get enhanced. And for example, we have a new heavy box, new hard colored box contributed to the box diagram and the triangle diagram. And then we have new hex uh, triple couplings. And also, more importantly, is that there's a second hex it is not far away from H1, and it can produce on cell and decay to the general model hex. So these many new features, uh, given the coupling are here, and you can give you an enhancement for this uh, uh, cross-section, or production cross-section for double hex. And in general model, I also remind you that the box diagram and the triangle diagram, they are oppositely uh, uh, destructively interfered in, in the general model. But in the uh, complete part of the scale, uh, also a parameter space scan, and um, the X axis is the normalized coupling between the new triple hex coupling normalized to a standard model value. And the right and the vertical is the branching ratio for the, the X2 decay to the standard model uh, 2 hex. Okay. Because this X2 maybe is on shell in the, in the harmony scan. Here. And the color code is the, normal, uh, is the ratio between the production coupling section in this model for a double hex normalized to a standard model case. And you can see that. Uh, there's enhancement in the parent space uh, for this ratio so that it can actually go from one auto manager to two auto manager in the rack zone. So, uh, but the lambda is a, has a wide range, right? And the branching ratio also a very can close to 100%. And this part, the lag, is before I impose the dark matter constraint in the theory. But once you impose the dark matter constraint, then uh, the parent space will shrink into, for example, the lambda uh, is. Before it's a minus 30 to 30 range, now it's thing to minus 1 to 1. And, uh, um, and, then, the, uh, the, um, and the, then the important thing is that all these parameters have actually shrink only to 2% left over after you import a dark matter constraint. So it's important to, uh, to import this constraint. And but another thing is that the lambda can be negative now. It's very normal. This, this, uh, the new coupling can be positive. So the negative then means that uh, the boss in the triangle diagram actually can be constructively interfered. <laughs> Is uh, actually is uh, uh, make this uh, can happen in the uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the new in the model. So we have to enhance the uh, uh, production cross section. Actually, uh, um, our team had also looked at the more detailed signal signal analysis for the final state, but uh, I don't have time to go into that. We can talk to VQ to uh, give the most analysis for that uh, of his thesis. So finally, topic is the dark matter. I have five minutes left to talk about the dark matter. So let me remind you that uh, all the parity of neutral particle as dark matter in the model has the D I mentioned, and also the neutrino, heavy neutrino, and W prime. Okay. So, um, so they have actually spin zero, spin one have spin one, all possible. But we will look at this uh, uh, only the first case in this, uh, this so far. And uh, there's uh, also I should have two comments. The dark photon or dark C in this uh, can be the first dark matter that I mentioned before, even though it's a uh, is a has a parity even in the model, but this is just a kinematic kinematic uh, uh, reason, no, not because of the Z2 symmetry. And also mentioned that uh, the triplet, there are some people have asked me before why we need triplet, uh, uh, especially Ping Wong and Paul, how to need that. Actually, uh, this triplet is a good thing because it can be it support the the Poryakov, the whole Poryakov the monopole uh, solution and can be a state topological stable and can be dark matter and. and this is uh, his work that he mentioned to me in uh, some time, a uh, few uh, last months. Um, so actually, a trick pack is uh, also can be dark matter because of the topological stability. Uh, so in our case, let me go back to the just compact scatter. We have uh, three components, uh, boson light, doublet uh, light, and uh, triplet light. So I can study in three different limits. For the doublet light, that means this O22 is a very big, so we can require this one square, the O22 square to be uh, bigger than two third that we call it as inner light. In the other case, that the other component would be uh, uh, would be uh, as, 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 uh, at this uh, ratio, two third. Uh, the interesting one is the boson boson light. This factor, O12, is big. 
but I will should uh, uh, award, award you that this goes on boson that doesn't mean it's a goes on boson. Okay. Um, it just means that uh, coefficient is, uh, is big, all right? The goes on boson, as I mentioned already, is actually absorbed by W prime already. So this is a uh, different, uh, just a name. So uh, I don't want to confuse you. So in this model, uh, because we have the extended Higgs factor and the extended uh, uh, neutral phase boson, so actually the portal is a uh, Higgs portal and also combined with the C, uh, vector boson portal in this uh, dark matter physics. So it's very, it's very complicated uh, <coughs> scenario. In particular, for this uh, Z exchange uh, both portals, uh, in the, if you remember, the D is a complex field. So this coupling can go, D, B, Z uh, coupling. But in, in that case, we don't have S, S, or P, P coupling. Uh, you, you have an S, P, Z coupling, but you don't have S, S, or P, P, Z coupling. In, in the inert case. So this coupling actually will enhance the cross uh, this uh, 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 T channel cross section. And also isostream stream violation on, the, on, on this uh, vertex too. So the, the, the story is quite complicated. So let me show one on the inert double light case. So this is a scatter uh, result on the primary space project onto the red density versus the dark metal mass. And you can see that uh, only a few small range of uh, parameter space can cons consistent with the pack result here. This only this portion and this portion. And it's clear that we have a, a Higgs resonance here. The blue one is Higgs resonance. And the orange one this is the Z resonance effect. So in this, that means that uh, in this case, the inner, like we have a vector portal, the Higgs portal is in action. You can see clearly the effect here. And on the right, you can also project your uh, our scan result on the uh, direct detection cross section, speed in the second cross section versus the uh, dark metal mass. And you can see that the prediction is way above all the dismantle constraint. Then, in other words, uh, this model in this scenario basically is excluded by the by the data. The inert light, inert of the light uh, dark matter in this version is actually uh, excluded by the data. And the interesting case is the triplet light. In here, you can see that the dark matter uh, prediction actually has a, opened a bigger range that are consistent with the plan result. The whole line here, the whole region here is consistent. And then the Z resonance is gone because the triplet light, the triplet does not couple to the, uh, couple, couple to the, the Z boson. So actually, they only have a Higgs resonance effect <laughs> left over. Uh, so it's a, you can see this is a Higgs portal in action in this version. And in the, Direct detection, you can see that uh, our prediction here and uh, in here that the the, over, the bigger shape, the gray area is only imposed the FGFC, only the scalar and uh, and the base factor constraint. Once you impose the red density constraint, is the blue section, and you encode more the, dark, the direct detection. Uh, this is the green yellow. This is the consistent. It's uh, lower than the uh, xenon exchange. So the parameter space satisfies all the constraint in this case. So finally, then they can uh, con put everything together in this part. Uh, so the blue, uh, the green is uh, FGSC constraint, and you put all the cons uh, you input, include the red density and also the uh, actually RD, I have a typo here, and also direct detection. Uh, you can see that this three lambda phi and lambda h delta and lambda phi delta can be further constrained. Others are still have a very big uh, range of parameters they allow by this. Uh, so ordered uh, analysis, all right? So let me uh, summarize uh, the last part. So I think I, I try to convince you that in this model, a uh, dark matter candidate exists uh, due to local gauge invariant rather than an F of the C symmetry. And this is, uh, to me, it's where it's more satisfactory, satisfactory. And the C2 symmetry is uh, emerged accidentally. So, um, and I have analyzed uh, three possible cases, the triple light, the inner double light can go from both light. I don't have time to show that. And only the triple light can be survived by all the data. So I will stop here and take question. Thank you. Thank you. Who are this Sunday? You said 128 for the X-Burst. Is it type or? Oh, maybe GB, uh, X, the X, uh, X, uh, 
I type maybe I type or I, I say I type maybe a new update 2028 or 2026 or something right? Uh, when you when you show the dark matter PD bar PD for your dark matter candidate, yeah. So it will be velocity suppressed for the annihilation. Am I right? Um, that is uh, no. They um, they are spin independent, so there's no velocity suppressed. It's suppressed because it's scalar particles, so they all have little couplings with the uh, with uh, uh, the Z. But they are Higgs particles. True. So there are two different effects here competing with each other. The Higgs photon effect and also vector. What you're talking about is the, is the Z. Right. Other question? So does the uh, Castle uh, Hill uh contribute a lot on uh, uh, the country? The Castle Hill? Yeah. No, this model violates Castoli symmetry because at the three level already, uh, the Z prime and the Z, uh, the Z actually had contribution already away from the standard. I don't have time to talk about that, but then maybe I have a backup slide to, to show you the, the mass metric here. So at the three level, the mass metric already violates the, the mixing between all the four, com four components. They, at three level, they don't have already have the uh, Castoli symmetry is value already at three levels. So we look at the constraint at the three level. Wow. So the massive uh, deviation, we look at that mean could be that already in the, in the gauge constraint. Yeah. But the gauge Castoli symmetry to me is not a fundamental principle that I have to, to uh, impose. Mm -hmm. This basically um, follow uh, I, I, uh, resonant uh, thing on post uh, philosophy is uh, trying to understand dark matter physics in terms of a dark case symmetry. Okay, uh, let's move to the uh, next speaker, Chen Chen. His title is uh, 